systems engineered sportswear, heat rejection footwear. I'll show you uh, an example of a running shoe. Forming concepts, you just see some of the concepts that came up out of the brainstorming process. And you had teams of students actually thinking about this in different ways. What's the best way to design it? And, and you have concepts. And these come up with prototypes. And eventually you end up with analysis of materials and properties and perspiration. In this particular project, here you see some things like a wicking analysis. How fast does the fabric absorb perspiration? Abrasion. Uh, what happens when fabrics get wet? Are they going to abrade in your skin? Are they going to cause discomfort? And thermal and material analysis actually use the computer program of the human body and try to determine which materials would be the coolest under different conditions of temperature and different conditions of humidity and exercise. So a lot of what we call analysis. And when you wrap all that up, the final thing you do is you do tests. And you test to failure, you test to extreme. In this particular case, as an example, the tests that were done was a treadmill. Uh, subjects were put on a treadmill. Two marks were placed on the, on the halter top. One at the sternum area, which moves with your body, and one at you see point B, which moves depending on, on, uh, on how effective this, uh, the S-top is, or the sports bra is. What you see is you get two different extremes. In the case of, of the top curve in phase, what that means is that both A and B are moving together. And that's the design you want. In the case of B, you have the two points are moving out of phase. And that causes the maximum tearing forces. I'm just going to show you very quickly some of the videos that were done. First it's done in regular motion. Then it's done in slow motion. This is actually on a treadmill on, a, on another cruise that we were on that these were filmed. get to the next. Okay, now here you see the difference between the same subject wearing a conventional sports bra and wearing uh, an early prototype of, of the S-top. And you can see that there's, um, there's a lot more compression, there's a lot less movement. And this was done with multiple subjects. So this is a way you test to see the benefit of this and you compare again the points A and B to do this. Uh, finally, when you use all these steps to come up with a, a final design that you prototype, you release it, you get feedback, and then you take that feedback and you redesign it and you monitor it and redesign it again, and that's the evolution process. Here you see some of the colors and some of the designs that we'll finally come up with. And now what we're going to do is have our models finally come up and demonstrate this for you. So if you can turn the lights on, if we could have our models come front stage. Now we have four models here of all different sizes, just to give you an idea. <laughs> Basically, the way these work is that uplift is, is controlled by a combination of factors. These straps here are Velcro. <laughs> my wife, it's okay. <laughs> there, are four, there are four strips of Velcro that you can tap this to come up any size you want so that you can control the amount of lift. So that's one version of uplift. The other thing you can do with these straps under here, these straps here, if Ron will turn around to the side and you can remove that to show what happens. These straps here also come, uh, are adjustable with four tabs. So that you can, any, any amount of bounce that comes through on the, on the design, you can compensate for by tugging on the strap. The material itself, the material itself is based on an open mesh that the tighter it compresses you, the more this mesh opens up. And when this mesh opens up, it allows air to come in. The inner lining of the, of the, uh, show it to you. The inner lining, Everybody can see the inner lining is made out of, it's a cotton. 
There are no seams, there's no places to catch when you exercise. Um, and mainly if you could turn around. You'll notice how the shoulder straps come inside the muscles in here. And so when you exercise, the same thing, uh, over the top, I don't know if you can see this, this is a foam shock pad. Generally, with most sports tops, the strap is very thin and narrow. And the more support that the, that, that strap has to handle, the more force is going to be on a very narrow part of your shoulder. And if you exercise for anything more than 30 or 45 minutes, that strap is going to start digging in and cutting. And that's why these straps are wider. And that's why there's a foam shock pad in here underneath this to keep that from happening. Um, I've kind of listed all of these things. There's sweat control. There's a, a, oh, very interesting. From an engineering perspective, all of the anchoring takes place in the back. So if you turn around, if all four of you turn around the back, you'll notice this part right here. This part right here is where all of the forces come together. And so this is the strongest part of the top, right here, where all, all the uplift, compression, separation forces uh, come together. So what you're looking at here are the early prototypes of this. And um, if you are interested in getting more information about it, I've left an email address. There's actually there's actually a pre-production special. I think in the next several months this is going to come out. And so if you send an email to where is it? N2Mars at AOL.com, we can get your information to specify a size and a color. And um, and so there you go. That's uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. We've covered a lot of area and hopefully finished it up. You can ask questions how they feel. No, no, no. Why don't you make some comments? <laughs> Actually, I used to own a health club, so I've worked with a lot of sports bras in my time. And this is probably one of the most supportive and well-made that I've ever worn. One of the things I really like about it is you can totally attach these straps. It makes it a lot easier to be able to get in and out of it, especially not without getting makeup all over it as you're pulling it on and off. So I really like it. If you are interested, we can stand out here and you come down and, and have a look yourself. Yes, it is washable. How long does the belly flow? How long do you suppose the belly flow will last before wearing out? It doesn't. It doesn't. No, the velcro doesn't. I mean, people in early prototypes have gone five years. As my sister, she's a velcro person. That's all she wears is sports bras. No other bra than that. So I know she'll buy <laughs> That's all she wears. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I hope you've enjoyed all of these talks, and if you have any questions uh, before we leave, we have a couple of minutes maybe. I'm sorry.